This week on RSPNB Update, has it actually happened? Have players actually been given a new roadmap or plan for RuneScape? We discuss upcoming content including Requiem for a Dragon, a new Rex Matriarch, and Damon Heim Archaeology. Also our theories on what exactly led us to this point. This is RSPNB Update, episode 982, recorded Thursday, April 18th, 2024. An actual plan. Hello, everybody, and welcome to another episode of RSBNB Update this week. Uh, one of the most consequential weeks in RuneScape 3 this year. We got the announcement of a new quest, we got the announcement of some interesting rewards coming from that quest. We also got an announcement of what's coming in May and June and the content strategy, amongst other things. And boy, we also got some spicy proteins as well later on in the show, don't we, Tannis? I mean, uh, if you think mayonnaise is spicy. I do prefer jalapeno uh, mayonnaise. <laughs> okay. But well, there you you're go. back. Welcome back. <laughs> Thank you, Shane. I'm um, Sorry to be gone, but it is great to be back and a good week to to be back. Um, we got a lot to uh, cover this week. Indeed, and to help us do that, Pernasius is here because he's been on the last two times that we talked about 2024 content strategy, and we're going to pick up the ball uh, where we left that. Welcome back, Burn. Thank you, thank you, and uh, yeah, we got a got a bit more to be uh, sort of optimistic about this time rather than the last two. So, looking forward to it. Indeed, indeed. And of course, if you want to follow along, full show notes over at update.show. We have a friends chat, bits, bites, and the Discord is over at update.show slash Discord. And I would be remiss if I didn't thank the experienced tier Patreon members who make RSB and the update go. This week, that's Amos Reed, Andrew C., Drama Free, Jason S., Jesse W., Kesky, Ricky A., Ripeth, Runestar, and the Naked Captain. Thank you so much, everybody. And you'll be hearing about our other Patreon offerings a little bit later in the podcast. In the meantime, I'm in game at Shane12088. Tannis can be found at Tannis79. And Pernasius is at Pernasius, unsurprisingly. So, <laughs> uh, I mentioned spicy uh, this week. And, you know, maybe maybe we, we start with the quest, which is perhaps the least spicy uh, thing as part of the entree this week. But coming next week, April 22nd, the next quest, uh, what is being effectively billed as the finale of the Fort 4 and 3 uh, storyline is Requiem for a Dragon, which is uh, being sold as Brave the Biting Frost of Ungale once more as you track down the recently escaped Vorkath, wrap up the Fort 4 and 3 storyline, and enter a new chapter in RuneScape lore. Dive deep into the stories of the Isle and the mystery surrounding Vorkanth, and as well as unlocking a new ritual site to train your craft. And of course, this quest is being done by the wonderful Mod Trike, Mod Stew, and Mod Zura. So, um, first thoughts on this quest? I know, I know, we haven't played it yet, but just where we're at right now, we'll save all the lore digging for next week. But first thoughts? Um, I wish it came out in a few weeks after something that we're going to be getting in May <laughs> because when I hear frozen land, I think, uh Oh, hard white to screen. see <laughs> yeah. Yeah, white screen. <laughs> that was my <laughs> first reaction. Yeah. Fair enough yeah. on that with no, uh, I'm, with I'm accessibility stuff. I'm super excited. I mean, I, I love my quests and I love the progression of a storyline uh, where they, you know, sort of, it's a step up each time. Uh, so, you know, it, it's it's going to be good to wrap it up in sort of a reasonable amount of time. Um, yeah, just I'm looking forward to it. So, and, and the sense fingers crossed. And the sense from this one is, is that it's bigger than any other Fort 4 and 3 ones. That we've had, which is what you would, yeah, yeah. Mod Stu said in the live stream that he, you know, in one of his play tests, he space barred in and took him about twenty minutes. Whereas Mod Shrike, knowing you know what was to come in the quest, um, read everything and you know did what a usual quest player would do, and it took about an hour. So you know, add a bit on to that for not knowing quest mechanics or where it's going to go, and that's the that's the volume mm. of quest we're looking at for this week. And I and I feel like that's what 
folks have been asking for um since the end of since the end of well since the end of the twilight of the gods and elder god arc because everything else that we've had since then has been very very tiny and yeah. it's left us questers kind of thinking okay what's next is this you know the new way of doing questing yada 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 um, so i am i am cautiously optimistic for this well, I'm glad you brought that up about the recent quest where they're over in sort of 20, 30 minutes. And yeah, it, it's 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 nice enough for a, a little bit of a story progression. But for people who do like the quest, I enjoy, okay, there's there's a big master quest coming out. It's going to take me two or three hours, you know, planning, setting up, getting done, and then just sinking into yeah. the game for that for that yeah. couple of hours and, and doing that. Yeah. And I've really missed that. And, you know, it's... And, um, and there's a question of if to they're going to, you know, get back to that and we'll, we'll come to that on the mm. live stream because that was actually something that was brought up by the community there and rightly so um but requirements on this are actually steep 86 archaeology are. yeah 86 yeah. archaeology 66 magic 75 necromancy 54 construction which is building all the buildings at tier one of the fort and level 10 slayer which, Which is I, fair enough. I mean, yeah. each each quest should build on the last one, and obviously we're going to get a new archaeology site. So thus, our eighty six archaeology, sixty six magic, which is obviously going to be for one of the spells that we're going to need to do. Um, yeah, it's a it's a reasonably tough boss, so or fight. So we're going to need that necromancer. I mean, it's it's everything in there. It makes sense. Makes sense. And, yes. Yeah. And I just want to like I just want to say like a lot of what's going on with with this quest i feel like we're going to be talking about um with the live stream as well because like when we're talking the size of this quest yeah. and well, what it may yeah. have what initials it may have had or what it may have been called in the past um really just i i feel like our semantics um in some ways but in other ways the requirements tell the whole story um of what i think has been a major change in uh in the way quests are done in rs in general meaning meaning you can see these skill requirements but um there's a there's a bigger funnel that's kind of starting you off and if you're doing the quest you're naturally getting to those requirements yeah. you don't have yeah. all these rinky dink unconnected meaningless things that you have to right. do and and hence why the they mentioned right? tomes of the warlock <laughs> needed for the archaeo because that was the archaeology based necromancy quest and this is picking up off that because you're going to be using archaeology to learn about ungale and vorkath right and whereas uh, there was a time when you would have ju there just would have been a whole bunch of requirements because hey this is a because of the rank that they ranked the quest yeah they just had to add a bunch of quest requirements which is why they did that big clean up a, a couple of months ago or a month ago actually yeah yeah that was all mods too one of his game jam projects yep. um rewards are equally as big with this um in terms of, you know, they're not shy of giving out the XP out anymore. You get 100k Necromancy XP, 100k Archaeology XP, uh, something called Zorgath's Ring, which gets upgraded, the Soulfarer title, access to the Ungale Necromancy Ritual Site, which is going to be a ritual site that's more leaned back in its training method, and except it doesn't give you soul progression. So for people who, you know, prefer that form of skilling, this is a different option for that and this is really just con continuing that bifurcation of hmm. necromancy being a combat skill yet you train it with skill when you're at work you just go techniques. here and when you're at home to lean forward you go to the proper site <laughs> yeah or i'll actually get my rightful right because there's no ritual disturbances here <laughs> right <laughs> So this is cool. Well, ritual. No, there are ritual disturbances. I thought it said, but they do last a bit longer, and uh, it is less XP. I thought I read that somewhere. Oh yeah, right. Uh, disturbances uh, well, during these rituals good. will linger for longer times, and your components yes. will last longer. So yeah, that'll get. I balanced. didn't. 
<laughs> I never look at um, quest rewards uh, normally, and I, I sort of I'm going, oh, I'm on the show this week. I have to read them. So yeah. Um, um, but there was nothing. I mean, yeah. I mean, the Zorgoth's they're, they're, ring is actually really interesting. That's the one I like, and they'd because, already le- uh, leaked that earlier anyway. Because if you don't have the the Reaver's ring for the extra crit chance with necromancy, this is your necromancy ring because it gives you that necromancy uh, damage bonus. But after you upgrade it, every attack has a five percent chance to generate one additional residual soul. So it just makes building those souls that much faster when you're attacking, which allows you to you know either let them out one at a time or let them out in the in the big volley of souls so i think that mm-hmm. ring is is really interesting in that it's just like that that moonstone jewelry piece that came out not too long ago with the owl quest in that it's not something that's going to be meta for you know the high-end pvmers who are going full reavers and whatnot but if you're going for a slayer setup and you don't have the reavers ring this is something you might want to look at uh mm. after this quest so i found that very interesting but definitely looking forward to getting back to questing on this and seeing what it has the ability to offer for it and, you know, just doing more archaeology because, you know, we all said the Tomes of the Warlock, I think, was our favorite necromancy quest given the archaeology um, bent that it had mm. towards it's it. It's funny, I mean... Sorry, go ahead. No, I was going to say, I'm 200 mil basically almost 400 mil um, archaeology XP, but uh, I'm actually, that's one of the things I'm most excited about getting back in, even though it's not really progressing me, just having another archaeology site to discover. And just because of the, the way they did it with little lore drops and, and everything in it, they, yeah. you know, it's it's a fully rounded skill. So loving that we're, we are getting the, uh, the Demonheim uh, archaeology site More finally that after but oh my god perfect yes. <laughs> uh tanis it sounded like you were going to say something there oh i was just going to say it's just uh kind of what in our appetite for for the big the big um entree well remember let, let's let's just realize that 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 damonheim dig site is in the same realm as the centiston dig site where it's not a full well, dig site yeah. it's going to be mini in air quotes i want to Temporary yeah, expectations on that. At this point, a mini Snickers after you ain't had a Snickers in a while. Mm. Still good. <laughs> Still good. <laughs> yeah. All righty then. Uh, live stream, which, you know, I I said this week, boy, it's been forever since I took notes for a live stream, but here we are. So they started dev work on this one at the end of January, which uh, Mod Stu said was a bit compressed for uh, quests in general. And he outlined that it was basically uh, the process is that you start with pre-production where they decide uh, the story, including the endpoint and the setup of the next storyline, which this quest is going to do, by the way. It's going to set up the next storyline, choose the characters to focus on, and because of that, Ungale and Vorkath were the last hanging plot thread, so that's the direction they go. And the goal is to bring them to a close and set up the next thing. And the quest is best described as a narrative-led mystery adventure. Sounds perfect. It really does. Mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, 3D cutscenes will be returning. Uh, they managed to co-op Mod Raven from his other project inside Jagex to write a lore book for this quest. And Sweet. the this this is I think where the we're starting to see some of the player feedback taken on board for this because um also in the live stream they mentioned that the bulk of the story here is focused on the player, which makes it much more player led than what we had in the fourth storyline. And I think we heard that all the way through is that we were felt like we were just kind of witnessing things for most of the fourth mm-hmm. stuff. So this is a this is a change for that. Then I, I feel like we uh honed in on, on numerous uh fort quests. So that's good. But I think the biggest thing that everybody wants to talk about is the question of future Grandmaster quests, because what effectively came out from this is that they're unsure as to whether something of that scope will happen again in the future, like a big extinction level Grandmaster quest, like Well Gothic Sleeps, like Slisgay's Endgame. Those sorts of Grandmaster's quests seem to be having a few questions up in the air. 
around them because they said it's a different time now with how Jagex operates in relation to quests compared to how it was in the past. And, mm. you know, it, it becomes a question, well, do you release one big quest in a half year or do you release three different quests in that same time? So they're very much in a never say never uh, situation about that. So it's no for now, but never say never. Uh, they want just want to strike the right kind of balance with that. Yeah. I mean, for me, uh, it's sad for me, but I, I know I'm in the minority. I mean, those big 8, 12-hour quests, I mean, I love those when I was doing them. They piss all like, the, the light within pissed me off so much when I was doing it, just trying to get... Because I didn't uh, have the wiki or the guide, so I was running around doing all those mirrors and such myself. Uh, but they were brilliant. And, you know, the Sliske Zen game, finally getting through that first <laughs> that first maze, only to be faced with the same size one, the next one. You know, it was like, what? But again, I just loved it. And it took me... That one took me 10 hours. But, you know, I can sort of understand that there's not a lot of players that are going to have, you know, sort of 8, 10, 12 hours to set aside to get through a quest sort of in, in one or two sittings. So I can see where they're coming from. Um, I do hope that sort of in the, you know, it, it, it is a never say never and that, you know, we don't need them every year, but we do occasionally get something like that again in the future. Yeah. And, you know, it's about as, for me, the way I see it, as the content creator in this and somebody who's been playing these quests for 20 years at this point, my goal with this, in addition to enjoying the quest and talking about it, because of course that's number one, but the next biggest thing I want to be able to do with the, what we do here on the show is get more people interested in questing. And that's specifically why the first thing this week on the agenda was the discussion of this quest and the rewards that it offered. Hmm. Because, I, I mean, the, the questers and the lore hounds are always going to say that that's going to be number one, and rightly so. But there's lots of people out there who just, you know, don't want to do quests. And I feel like if you can get them hooked in with the with the with seeing what the reward is and then take them along for that adventure of how that quest is going to feel, then maybe they're going to go back and do some more quests and eventually we'll convert somebody to um, to being a quester. At the very least, That's, but I mean, I look hand. at it. I mean, quests. I mean, yeah. I mean, a lot of the earlier quests are sort of you know, rough. Don't they're yeah, rough? Exactly. But still, yeah. it, 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 it's, and especially later quests, they're like stories. Like you know, if you're watching a TV show, don't sit there. I mean, okay, it's going to take you double the time to do it, but read the text, read what's happening. And it sinks you into it. It's like reading a good book. I mean, you don't pick up a book, read the first page, skim through, and then read the ending. Uh, you know, you read each page. and you know, yeah, I, I, read the last, and... I read the last page of a book before I start reading the book. Oh, my God. I, 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 would, I would have changed you to the bloody radiator <laughs> if I was in school with you. Um, <laughs> I would, I would, you'd, be, you'd be the guy I'd rip the book in half. Okay, read the first half, and then I'll give you the second half. <laughs> But no, but I mean, that's the whole thing. I mean, questing, and as I tell people, you know, when they ask why I love quests, I said, because it's a story. Don't space far, read what's happening, immerse yourself in it, and you actually understand some of the background behind characters and even little, you know, incidental characters, you, you know, you, you can find out a little bit more about them and such. And it's just, it just makes it a fuller game for me uh, yeah. uh, with that type of thing. And I think thing. the biggest thing, in addition to that side of it and bringing new people on, I think the thing that the, that I've heard as, as a concern from the questing type folks this week is that in terms of level of escalation, what's the maximum level of escalation we're going to see right now, right? Is it going to be something that's like this where it gets wrapped up or is it going to go a little bit further to like while well, Gothic sleeps a ritual of the Majorat level. Personally, I think that's the sweet spot. Yes. Well, I feel like they've set up a, a a real nice straw man here. And and we're all having a debate about this when I feel like it's a false choice. Um you know, everyone says you can't do both. Okay. You can't do both at the same time, but you can do both. And there is a time and a place for each style of questing. Now, Grandmaster, that, that's, that's what, I mean, that's almost kind of like 
the scapegoat in the in this. Yeah, because it's a flashy word, to be honest. It's a flashy word, mm-hmm. and but to me, grandmaster that that has a lot to do with those BS requirements I was talking about earlier. Yes. Right. Some grandmaster quests, yeah, they're they're longer, but. <sighs> I mean, the Alpha versus me Omega was a Grandmaster me, quest. Right. It, the thing that makes, a, to me, Grandmaster is is how pivotal it is to the lore of the Epicness. story. You know, or, or, right. Mm. And so, um, so to me, let's say you're having having a um, a year and, and you're doing a storyline like four, 4 and 3, right? That's kind of getting people into it by bit by bit by bit you're able to mix in other content you know throughout the year but then the following year you could have that big set piece quest and and i think you do those big set piece quests for finales of stories yeah. like the gnomes and things like that well but let me just rattle off some... you can only have it one yeah. or the other and let I me don't rattle think off some, some recent way. grandmaster quests then uh alpha versus omega which was the culmination of the Rath Hill story. Extinction. Sins of the Father, which is a mini quest. I don't know why the wiki has that on there. Um, need to look into that. Pieces of Hate, Sliski's Endgame, Children of Ma, River of Blood, The Light Within, Plague's End, Fate of the Gods, One of a Kind, Birthright of the Dwarves, The World Wakes, The Brink of Extinction, Ritual of Majra, The Void Stares Back, Nomad's Requiem, and Well Guthic Sleeps. Mm-hmm. And the the thing that you're seeing in that Grandmaster, you know, despite the length, and I point to Alpha versus Omega on this, is that it doesn't need to be, you know, long and laborious like Extinction was. It just needs to have that uh, categorization where it sits in the, in the story tree, you know? So yeah, exactly. And as you said, like with this one here, the the end of this is going to lead us into the next quest. You don't need to have a, a, you know, a world-ending Grandmaster-style quest at the end of every storyline. But if you've got a progression like Fourth for Inthry Quest series leads into the next one, which perhaps leads into a third one, and then we get a Grandmaster at the end of it because that is going to tie everything up. You know, Maybe the reclaiming of the entire wilderness and it becomes a paradise again, you know? <laughs> However they do it, but, you know, it's they, they've they got to look at – you can't say never do it, but you, I can understand we don't need a Grandmaster every year. So, um, you know, it, it's going to be interesting to see how they go. But, yeah, um, as long as quests – yeah, you know, we, we stick to – I mean, I don't mind having those little fun quests as, as – you know, little sort of entry point quests to start off with. Um, but, you know, when they're a storyline quest, as long as it's progressing the story and taking us to the next point and sort of opening up more more of the world, more characters, etc., cetera, um, you know, keep it going that way. Yeah, and, you know, the interesting thing is is that I feel like we, what I've, you know, I've walked into this and it makes sense now. Um, they mentioned that that's not how quests are. And, you know, if you follow the wiki and from that Grandmaster page that I was just reading, you get to um, the the update that brought Succession in where they actually removed difficulty from the quest overview uh, screen and sorting section so that now there's the timeline order on this one. And the initial definition of that Grandmaster is that it would have had 80 plus skill requirements on it. And the discussion around that reading from the patch note here is that difficulty is subjective and each player has a unique definition of what makes a quest a grandmaster, intermediate, so on and so forth. And because of this, they have just relied on other methods of sorting the quest list. So grandmaster in effect was arbitrary back in the day on that so it's just at this point it seems it's just better to sort by if you're looking at terms of you know difficulty skill requirements involved or if you're looking for something that's really long go for length because you can have a very long quest that falls into master or intermediate as it Um, used to be uh, that's where i'm that's where i'm going okay that's great that 
that's actually where it started. Right, right. And and that's why yeah. and that's why we get this thing about how Jagex operates with Quest now is different than it's been in the past, because that goes back to succession. And that patch note I just read. Okay. So that so that you know really explains everything, but I just think that there's a push by players to always have, you know, a big epic conclusion to that sort of thing. And I think that's incumbent on the storyline and knowing and knowing, you know, what's going to be involved in that to get that kind of grand conclusion behind it. And if you don't build up to that, well, then you're not going to get it. So I think that's the reasoning behind well, even, that. I mean, even then, though, what they're saying is they're not arbitrarily saying, well, this has to have 80 stats and this has to have this. And you can still have a conclusion. You can have an ending to a storyline that, that doesn't have to have those things. Right, and because of that, based on how it used to be, that wouldn't be Grandmaster. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So that kind of uh, summarizes and that, and that's, that's why, and that's why the wiki has then categorized, if you look at Grandmaster, that's why they have categorized Alpha versus Omega in Sins of the Father as Grandmaster, even though Alpha versus Omega was basically go just kill Raziel, and Sins of the <laughs> Father was a mini quest that was, you know short a deal mm. with the effigy incubator yet had requirements of 85 crafting 85 rune crafting 85 smithing and 85 invention yeah. whereas alpha versus omega had a requirement of 95 necromancy mm. and again i mean that one I, I can sort of see being class but the sins of the father was just a uh, that yeah i mean as you said it was a mini quest it's not really a grandmaster yeah so or that one took longer Right, because yeah, but it took time, ages. The, the time exactly. Key, it, I was going to say it was time gated. <laughs> yeah, so, six yeah. months. Um, if you used your uh, reset tokens. Yes. So seven for me because I forgot one. Yeah, yeah which by the uh, way, folks, remember, ago. remember every 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 week to go check Thalman's shop and get the dialogue there. Yay! Sorry, <laughs> I'll bring that up. I'll bring that back. I'll bring that up when what we've been doing. <laughs> All right, fair enough, fair enough. But, you know, quest weeks are always wonderful here at Update, and I'm glad to that we get to um, get to do this again uh, next week. So do stay tuned uh, for that next week. And you know what's really good about that? What's that? Oh, now that my daughter's, uh, she, her and her, her and her boyfriend have bought a house together, but they don't uh, move in until December, and their or her rent was up where she rented with her girlfriend uh, a couple of weeks ago. So she's sort of moved back home between my place and her mum's place, um, but she's staying with me Wednesday, Thursday, and her mum Monday, Tuesday. So the quest being released on the Monday means I've got Tuesday to do it all <laughs> without interruption. <laughs> <Nice>. <laughs> Oh, well, as they say, it's the little things in life, right? <laughs> That's it. Well, uh, yeah, I mean, especially now, obviously, uh, with everything, I've, I, I, I plan everything around when my kids are visiting. So sometimes I don't get to do a quest for sort of four or five days because, oh, you know, my daughter's coming over this day, my son's coming over this day, uh, you know, I've got this on here. Now, when can I squeeze in the quest? But, yeah, next week's going to be a good one. <laughs> Rightio. Well, I'm going to uh, thank some Patreon supporters, then we'll get into the um, into the semi-spicy news, I guess, this week. So this week, I'd like to thank Alvaro L., Amos Reed, Andrew C., Arvid Zell, Chubura, Daniel W., Dominic R., Drama Free, Duramax, Free Milk, Guy Lafleur, Jacob G., Jade Gizmo, Jason S., Jeebus, Jesse W., Kesky, Lemon Lodge, Luminos, Nate the Great, Parnassius, Ren Hawk, Ricky A., Ripeth, Runestar, Samuel F.L., Scott D.S., Shirt Pants, Targayeen, The Naked Captain, The Dab and Goat, Tim, Tom V, Truth Ray, Ukulele Steve, Zant, and Zazicon. Big, huge thank you to everybody on this list and everybody in general supporting us on Patreon. You can learn more about those offerings over at patreon.com slash rsbnb. And if you like what you see there, well, you can sign up for as little as a dollar a month and you get access to an entire catalog of extra shows here from us. We discuss all sorts of things. Last month was the uh, PVM episode in which we helped Pern get started on PVM. We'll get an update on how Zuck's going later. 
But this month, we also did the Quest tier list, a much-anticipated episode where we rated 27 quests uh, over the span of about 90 minutes. So if you if you want to hear more Quest tier lists, do let us know in the comments. We're always open to uh, expanding out those tier lists because those are fun episodes to make. But we got tier list galore. We got the Daily Scape tier list, but it's not all uh tier list I, I always mention the tier list because there's some of the content that people like the most but there's other stuff too there's stuff on eoc that was our first installment legacy combat pmons going way back all sorts of things anything you can really put your finger on that deserves about an hour uh discussion in runescape we've done it so patreon.com slash rsbnb we also have a VIP tier where for $3 a month, you'll get a VIP rank on Discord, which includes a special chat channel and a mention on the podcast at the start of the month, as well as high quality stereo versions of the show. And if you uh, give $5 a month, you'll get a shout out on the podcast each and every week and gain exclusive access to the outtakes that we use to make the clip show at the end of the year. And of course, with that, we also send you the Patreon Christmas card in december and of course uh, the experienced here as well big huge thank you to all those people who we mentioned at the top of the show but uh, patreon.com slash rsbnb quest tier list is there many other shows too thanks so much everyone thank thank you okie dokie new rex matriarch next month the necromancy rex matriarch osius uh, this is being spearheaded by Mod Ramen. They've taken a couple of Game Jam updates that were popular and are moving them into production, this being this being one of them. I'm looking forward to this because I feel like the original Rex Matriarchs were fun and they were very interesting uh, on the reward space. And, I mean, given the fact that there's an extra combat style in here, I feel like this is going to be something um, that's going to be uh, appreciated, even if it's a beginner or introductory level boss. A better ring than the Reaver's ring, perhaps. Mm. The necromancy. <laughs> Probably the same. Join it up with a with a new Horgath, whatever, whatever his name, the uh, the necromancy ring. Get that and get ten drops off this one and hook them up together. And hey, you never know. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And see, I I wonder about this because if you look at um the way they did this and you know what they what they offer in terms of um upgrading rings what ring would you upgrade if you were keeping that same sort of idea behind it well that's the whole problem isn't it right I mean... it's like there's no base for it so mm. you'd almost have to do something new entirely exactly. unless power unless creep, power uh, creep Exactly. I, I, hey, hey, I said this like... on the I said this on the old school show three times last week, and nobody has yelled at me for it. But I love power creep. Thank you. <laughs> me too. <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't mind like power creep. I mean, it just it just makes it for for noobs like myself who can't fight. Uh, you know, it just makes it easier for uh, us to sort of get things done. But I mean, if you, I mean, I, I still think we should have a passive offhand ring and luck of the dwarves becomes like a passive so you can wear that offhand and wear a, a combat ring on Ooh. the on the main hand or something but anyway however they go but i mean doing something like well hey you know maybe if this drops something that combines the the reavers ring with the uh that new ring that's coming from the quest and you know you get it just gives you that passive so you've still got the same strength and everything that uh uh, that the Reavers Ring gives you, well, but it also gives you that passive thing or something right, like but, that. But, I mean, but, it's but, really but, hard. But to... the thing is, um, the thing is, is that the Reavers Ring wasn't necessarily intended to be the Necromancy Ring. It just mm. worked out so well because it gave that extra crit chance and it has such a huge stat bonus on it that yep. given the fact that so many things, you know, um, PVM-wise, accuracy doesn't matter. It was just a, you know, free 5% crit chance on that and you know you could use it for any of the other styles as well but there's better offerings um yeah. for each of them so well and see and that's the thing i mean i would never have known the reaver's ring i was i was still using my um uh the the death ring ring of death uh until we did the show and it got explained to me oh okay so yeah and, and that's the thing i mean it's it, it's really hard to know but it, it's 
what I mean, I know the quest ring is going to be sort of a, a more of a mid tier ring, but to release a mid tier and this this ring will have to be a higher tier for necromancy. Uh, at the same time, I just I don't know. It's um, it's going to be interesting to see what they do, and you know, I trust them. I mean, I know you know we are critical sometimes of them, and hopefully our, our you know our, ours is constructive criticism when we give it to them, but you know I, I do trust them to do the right thing for the game because as we said. Yeah, you know, we play the game, but this is their job. This is how they put food yeah. on the table and yeah. pay their mortgage and such. So they're not going to want to stuff it up. Uh, so when people say, "Oh, you they're think trying it's, to," um, it, well, no, it's. <laughs> I don't know if it's been said anywhere, but do you think the fourth conjure is too powerful a reward to come from um, a necromancy matriarch? The which one? The fourth conjure. Uh, no, because they're a tough enough. I mean, I can fight them. But I still die once or twice. They're a, you know, for for a, a mid level PVMer like myself, they're still tough enough to chase. But I mean, going by the way they've done them, I would have to assume it is going to be another a, 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 an actual proper necromancy based ring. Okay, that's fair. I'd like to see the fourth yeah. conjure eventually. I don't know if this is the. But spot it wouldn't for make it. sense to be here. I mean, and honestly, I don't think it makes sense to be a drop. Um, the conjure, yeah, it uh, should be I an did, unlock, yeah, yeah. That, I, I, that's where I'm at with that. Okay, well, I mean, it, it's close. May is only three weeks away at this point, so we'll yep. probably hear something sooner rather than later. Um, taking bets, taking bets. <laughs> yeah, I, I, I still think conjure would be interesting, but that's just me. Oh, that'd be very interesting. And but I mean, if they're I, staying I'm, on I'm theme, then, then go, you know, yep. proper necromancy ring. But the question is, then, what's the base item? So yeah, that's it. Where, um, and where we're going to get that base item from? Because what is it? Ten, ten rings of all the other ones. So you'd have to get ten or something. Maybe you can make the base item with your soul. Maybe, soul maybe yeah. yeah, maybe they come from Moonstone. Well, you have to make them well, and in, in do whatever you in soul well, them and do all that. Yeah. yeah. Oh, that'd be, be interesting. Make, to see, maybe anyway, something Moonstone yeah. related. Yeah, we'll wait and see what they do. Also in May. Start, start saving those moonstone rings, people. <laughs> <laughs> also in May. First, and if you're making money, you've got you to give me 10%. Ooh. Also <laughs> in May, Relica graphical update, which we knew was on the way. Yeah, but I'm excited about it. I, love, I, I, I spend a lot of time at Relica with... Um, Doing what? With clues. So oh. clues. There's a lot of clue things out there. So it's uh, it's it's a very old looking area, and I still run yeah. down there to get um, if I need if I need my uh, herbs. I run down to the Chaos Giants down there occasionally. Okay, and also high contrast mode. Yeah. Clap. Why? Clap. Why? Clap. Explain to the the folks why this is so important. Um, well, this is this is great. Uh, I play with, you know, I'm I'm legally blind, so anything that can help me um, differentiate and see better is is a great addition. Um, and a lot of times, that is something that can be very helpful just by making it darker or lighter. Um, Right now, I get by doing a, a, you know, doing some of this using the sky boxes and, and filters, um, but it will be nice to actually have something that's like dedicated to this. Um, and and this is what I was referring to when I when I was think talking about the new quest. Um, you know, obviously I'll be doing it next week when it comes out, but. I wish I had high contrast mode. Because, right. Um, so so it, it, it is helpful. So what it looks like it's doing here is it makes the entire environment black and white. It's going to be highlighting players as blue, NPCs as yellow, um, enemies as red, and inter interactable objects as teal. Now, I wonder how that's going to go color blindness for you. The difference between red, yellow, and teal. <laughs> uh, 
I'm, 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 I'm part, wow, the devil's in the details, huh? Yeah. Um, well, there's a photo of it there. How does that hmm. look to you? If you, if you do that, how does that look to you? Yeah, it's in the news post. Okay, I also said. This is interesting. The, ooh, okay. Okay, so you got it up. What do you see? Are you able to discern the difference between a player, an NPC, and an enemy is the question. Or no, a better question is, are you able to see four different colors on there in addition to the yeah, grayscale no, background? I see four different people. Okay. Yeah, see the... yeah no, I don't see any difference in, in them at all. Yeah, but may, like maybe, those... maybe they'll be, maybe you can change those colors that, to what suit you. I don't know if that's a thing that they're doing, but It'll be interesting to get the yeah, your feedback was, on it once it's done. <laughs> when I first looked at this, this looked I thought it looked really good because I could see the mountain was dark and I could see the light outlining of where you would walk into the right. um, cave. Okay, so it's so basically it's, it's good on the environment like side. Yeah. It's just when it comes to interaction it's a little bit questionable. Yeah. Because the yeah. interact objects are the teal color, so they're actually a different. Like, like, do you see yeah, where the anvil teal. is? Yeah, that's supposed to be teal. Yeah, those. I mean, and then the person standing to the left of the anvil is yellow. The one standing below the anvil, oriented south, is blue. Which is you? Which is supposed to be the player? Yeah, and then there's rabbits to the right side of the tree that are red. Rabbits, I can't tell that they're red, but I can tell that they're dark. Okay. Which is, um, which is what I would expect in a high contrast mode. Um, I'm really kind of, I'm, I'm surprised at the use of um, color, or at least the teal and yellow. Yeah. Okay. Um, That's interesting then. Um. Oh. Not, Typically, what you see, but uh, and, but at the same yeah. time, remember that whenever we mouse over something, you probably don't see this, but whenever you mouse over something, you do get a red outline around it, and when you mouse over an NPC, you get yeah. a yellow outline around it, and when you mouse over an object, you get a teal element behind around it. Well, that outlining does always help, but I'm just amazed that until you pointed it out, I didn't even see the people. Like, I could see the environment real well, but I didn't – I looked right through the people. Well, as as, as you say, the devil's in the details then. Yeah. <laughs> devil's yeah. in the details on that. Okay. Yeah. okay. And again, this is their first iteration of it, so obviously mm -hmm. they'll take feedback and, uh, you know, they can always – change that as we go forward and i mean you know as i said mate maybe you'll be able to change those colors so you can change the teal to something that your eye is going to see um yeah we'll wait and see what happens but any 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 move towards accessibility is a good move uh you know whether it's it may not be perfect straight off but if it makes it better and they can keep going ahead uh you know let's fully support them on it Oh, absolutely. And the good things that we, you know, the good things that we have here is it's easy to, I mean, it, it's easy to pick out this stuff in the, in the environment. And I would even say like, it's easy to tell the anvils from the ground and from the ground okay. from, from the anvils. So it's still better um, than it is normally. Mm. Correct. Yeah. I, I'm just amazed. I, I, I just didn't notice the people. I looked right through them like they were like this was Port Phasmatis or something, right? Like I. I you say yellow. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's crazy. <laughs> just, but no, um, the buildings are, you know, this is this is good, too. You the. Um, I mean, you can see the high contrast with the frame of the buildings and then the. Okay. Know, like so, so like, so, so it's not all bad then. Good. Oh no, 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 no. It's um, better than just, than it nor currently is, which is yeah, a step forward. Right, and and you know, and and I am surprised with, at some of the color use, but um, but otherwise, this is it, it has some good things to it. Nice. Okay. Um, double XP coming back on May seventeenth. 
which I mean, we knew it was going to be a May every but quarter. That works. Yep. <laughs> Um, moving on to June, new archaeology right. dig site, the Damonheim dig site. Connect with mysteries you uncover to explore the long forgotten secrets of Damonheim, as well as excavate and discover new items and explore the stories that they tell. Yes. Yes. Yeehaw. Who has been excited about this? I mean, this will be the highlight of... The quarter. Yeah, it's going to be the highlight of the year for many people. <laughs> I mean, for, yeah, I mean, and, the, way, and, the way we're going, <laughs> and, and it's a mini site at that, right? But, um, but I mean, it's uh, I love it when movies and games and stuff that I like. It, fan service is not a bad thing to me. It's a good thing. <laughs> Give me fan service. I'm a fan, and we've all. I mean, we've all followed the story of Demonheim since, what, 2010, right? Like, <laughs> ever since it showed up that day. Um, I, and I want to know. Like, I, I want to know what's the mystery going to be? What are the, you know... What's I wanna, the relic going to be? Yeah, yeah. Like, this is exciting. This is probably the most exciting um, of of what they're. I think I'm more excited about, about the quest, but I'll put Damonheim archaeology right behind that. Yeah. Um, yeah, it sounds like a beefy quest, so yeah, I'm sort of with you there. The, and, the, but and the, yeah. also just well, the, one's May, one's June, so the, hey, the, the <laughs> graphics that they're showcasing in this too. Oh, phenomenal! They they know how to whet the player's appetite on this, is what I'll say. <laughs> <laughs> so uh more on that when that gets closer also in june uh pride event and the beach makes its regular uh return in the place of the canceled summer skilling event canceled summer skilling event what did they Keep mean the by this in the nuts again <laughs> well they told us that they were going to yeah. replace the beach this year with a skilling event right so, again, but i don't think anybody assumed- asked for that no, I think people like the beach. People th- like the hole. Yeah, that's what that's I, what people do at the beach, isn't it? The hole, jump I, in the hole. <laughs> I, I think, but I think Tanner pre-show. <laughs> yeah, I think pre-show Tanner's hit it on the head when we say seasonal events. We're talking, uh, you know, hang on, fresh yeah. starts. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And we, we need to like we need that. to go through this because yes, once again, reading between the lines, you learn so much with this. We're seeing another shift in terms of how Jagex handles their development work on this in that they say they picked up the game jam projects. Okay. But one of the challenges that they face is the impact of a change made at this point in development of the summer event. The summer event was taking as many resources to deliver as a persistent content release. So as they set out to build another strong foundation, which they could iterate on over the years, as they did with Christmas and Easter, they, in effect, were running out of time to build other things. So they said, with this change coming around five weeks into the development of the summer event, there's now less development time than they uh, would typically have to work on these newly planned content releases. So to offset this, they cut down on the pre-production phase by a focused effort, and they focused on beefing up and completing these two extra Game Jam projects. And they say Game Jam projects are more akin to a prototype. A great idea that's in a somewhat playable form that requires plenty of additional resources across multiple teams to be release ready. So by building these, um, by building from these concepts with their reallocated development resources, they're confident they can get some great new content updates within the same release schedule. So that's how we got the game jam projects for May and June, but they were working on this summer event hub to replace the beach because they said they've heard for many years now that people want bigger and better seasonal events, something that embodies the spirit of the season, brings everyone together, has a seasonal quest, and is packed with gameplay and earnable rewards. They did this with Christmas and Easter, which they made a reality, but they also built a strong foundation for each of those. And they say, from our feedback... There's a balance to strike in achieving this, and it's clear that you want to see more development time invested in permanent content 
especially in the nearer term, rather than content with limited seasonal availability. So my question is, where did they get that memo that because the Christmas event went off well, (laughs) we wanted the first half of the year in dev time to focus on seasonal event hubs? And that's what we call holiday events, not seasonal events. To, as Tanner said pre show, seasonal events are fresh starts, are leagues. They're a seasonal event. Um, And hey, I'm all for them building these things that they can build on in the future to make development time for these these holiday events easier. Uh, But you don't need to do them all in one year. You've done Christmas, you've done Easter. Leave the yeah, leave the summer one. I you know the beach was everyone loves a hole. Yeah, that's right. I thought, I thought the beach was cherished beach. by a lot of people. <laughs> yeah. I, I mean, mean, I still do it. I mean, I just go down there, sit in the dungeon hole, and uh, just slowly build that up because you know it's just yeah. like easy. That's why I earned my tokens. <laughs> and I and I think um, this year they should add like a a nude section to the beach. They have a nude <laughs> beach. What? Yeah, a nude beach. This is this is not why? a dating site. <laughs> because they have them everywhere else. They could be free. <laughs> uh, Where no does this come running from? Because <laughs> <I don't know. laughs> um, I forget who who was it. Someone, one of the mods is asking for ideas, and I'm like, hmm. <laughs> Mod Luma was asking for it on Twitter. Oh shit, dude! I wouldn't. Have what new rewards do you? No, she was asking what new rewards and what quality of life change. Oh, Tannis, quality of life change. He wants to just go balls free. <laughs> you know, just <laughs> this cash, man. But the point Let behind the this, breeze. the point behind this, is that the situation we're in for the first half of this year, outside Christmas, and you know, we can give them January and February to get going on this, but the rest of it. It sounds like we were the blunt. We were the we were the we were the victims of a of a Q, of a of a communications blunder here. Mm. Yeah, it yeah. does it, because it, it really does. I, and, and things... I have met no one who yeah. has said that they want holiday events in place of content. Sure, people it, said they wanted better Halloween after. The microtransaction mm. thing last year. They wanted better Christmas that felt like violet is blue. Sure, people yep. are going to say that about Christmas because Christmas is the most important one of them all. Christmas and Halloween. Yeah, Christmas mm. and Halloween are the two big ones. But, Easter, I don't I mean, I didn't mind it. But, right. You know, I, I preferred so, something like uh, Slisky's chocolate event. But So the question is, where did this signal come from and, and mm. why did they choose to act on it? And that's where I think they've got the difference between seasonal and holiday events mixed up. And I think a couple of things were conflated, right? Like, I think it was, it, it's that where we're talking about seasonal events being like time limited events or special things, you know, the fresh start, the leagues, the dead men, that kind of thing. Versus they also did get feedback about we would like a, meaningful quest in a holiday event, right? But that it was a different thing. And I feel like that it, it was conflated. And they're like, oh yeah, okay. So we need to keep making the hubs. And I mean, and granted, good job is all around with the, yeah. the hubs and with the yeah. stuff that they made. Um, but yeah, you're right, Shane. I mean, no one ever said to drop everything and focus on on that um <laughs> especially when it's only in for you know two to four weeks well the idea right. is you re- rerun it mm. right but yeah but that's only once a year yeah so you know and I'd... there's only so much you can do no, ma- no matter what it is okay it, it, that's a couple weeks of content but if you do like what we were calling seasonal events that's all of the content that you get to do again in a new way with a new twist and a new it, it's so much more like if they ran the trailblazer buck. on rs3 the numbers would shoot to the roof oh my god yes 
Um, and, and it's all stuff that's already there. It's in, in, uh, you're just and, and and the other thing is is that people wanted an update from Mod Keeper, and it was only like last month we got the last one on that of what was coming. And you know why not? Why didn't you tell us that we're you're working on the Third on point. the on the summer beach on the summer event thing? Well, they did. They did say uh, back in the last one that they are working on a new summer skilling thing. They didn't tell us that they had all their resources thrown into it. But yeah, exactly. It's um, it didn't really make sense when I heard about this. Yeah, I I, I still want to know where the signal came from and why it was acting. And I on. think I think it was wires crossed. I really do. I mean, well, maybe they were just looking at the number of people right. who were. So, you have a number of ways you it. can you can get information back into Jagex. You have CM, you have CM looking over social media, Twitter, Reddit, you name it. You have the surveys that happen, and you can have you know direct focus groups, which I don't know, direct focus groups and surveys from Jagex, which I don't think they're doing at this point. But those are the those are the main biggest ways you can bring information back into Jagex, right? I think. I think it's surveys because data is because we did have data, a survey. It's all about year, how anyway. right. It's all about yeah. how it's interpreted, right. and if someone reads seasonal event and they have that idea in their head, right? I mean, it. I I feel like it was probably the surveys because I don't think they would have. They wouldn't have and acted they saw, in this. And they saw a seasonal okay. event. Combine yes. that with what they saw for Christmas, and they're like, "Okay, yeah. let's let's do more of this," because it was obviously received very well. Right. I I think you know the only time that they're going to do that from from social media or something like that is the dreaded hero pass or something, right? Like if it is a big enough uproar, okay, I can see them make, but but not like this, not not in a oh, that's what they want. No, I I I, th I think it was probably a survey. Okay. And again, why not tell us that the resources were tied up building these seasonal event hubs? Yeah, just just let everyone know because I think that's been as big of you know that that's been as bad as anything else, right? I think a oh, lot of people have stuff pass. to work on. Yeah, yeah. But I'm still in the minority there, but yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um and I I mean at the very least, with this now being out there and you know, we know exactly where this is, you question then, okay, what's gonna happen for Halloween? Because you need to start then planning Halloween by August. Yeah, that's the bu I <sighs> And see and the and there there we have to make a choice right like do you do we want halloween or knowing that it might mean that you ain't getting anything else it's you're damned if you do damned if you don't, damned anything, if you don't really. yes. um yes. but i mean it's I clear mean, I... it's clear at this point more communication would have been better yeah I mean, yeah. the the Halloween event this year was sort of centered around um, Port for Rinthry, if I remember correctly. But before that, we had no you know, the, big, the big the big the big death. The big concern with Halloween was the fact that you could get um, an item off Treasure Hunter that would, in effect, uh, make it so that you didn't need to run candles and whatnot anymore at the um, Necromancer. That's right. Site. Yes. Yeah. yeah. But I mean, also the. Um, the year, the couple of years before, where it was sort of sent, they had that hub centered around. Grand, uh, grand, yeah. yeah, yeah. That was and good I enough. Think that, that's exactly. They just need to build on that because that was a good little event, or even better, bring back the one where we went into the haunted house and yeah, had to kill called. all the. That, that, I love that was that was probably one of my favorite Halloween ones. Yeah, uh, the absolute know, favorite. They don't need to be cookie cutters of it. Like you know, let's be honest. The Easter event was very similar in in what it was doing to the uh, 
the, the Christmas event, which is fine. Oh, yeah. Totally different environments and such, but we don't need every holiday event to look like that. Sure. You know, we yeah. want variety. So build your hubs, do those type of things by all means, but please don't make them all the same. And yeah, differentiate between seasonal and holiday events. Yeah. I don't know. I'm not willing to go down that path and say that that was the wire crossing. Mm. If it wasn't, please hear I us. don't know because we want, I... we want seasonal events. Yeah. Because I don't know. <laughs> we want leagues. I, I spent a ton of time because I was trying to get, and I ended up with six of the uh, bunny ears. I was chasing five and I got six. Uh, but no one was really. Like when I when I went down and visited because I didn't do a lot of the Christmas one because I'd already had everything there. Uh, yeah, I didn't see a lot of. I mean, but people at the Christmas event were really enjoying it, talking, engaging, and such. I didn't see a lot of that at the uh, at the Easter event. A lot of people just go, "Oh, Jesus, this, you know, I, I I've got this much more to go so I can get out of here." Um, but you know, I didn't see that same love for the Easter one yeah. as I did for Christmas. Yeah. Yeah. And I, I think the most important thing at the end of the day to remember is from when things were right and the players were in Jagex's favor. And that was the period of time where they started delivering on content. Content content releases were regular. We didn't have the monthly mm. behind the scenes post, but we knew what was coming, you know, a, a month, a few weeks in advance. And that was yep. and that was more than enough. And I think that's all players are really asking for is to know that there is, you know, content on the way and the general direction that things are heading. And yep. if there could be somebody from, you know, design level up and beyond for RS3 to say, this is, you know, what RS3 stands for, this is what RS3 is, and this is the direction, you know, that the game is going to go, whether that be story, whether that be types of skilling updates, or we even whether that be, you know, just general direction and um, guiding ethos of what the game is, just to hear that from somebody would be refreshing at this point in time, I think. So, And like I was saying before, most people still have something that they can work on. And if it's not on their main, then it's on an, an alt or an Iron Man or, or something like that. But they have something that they can work on, but they want to know what's going on, right? Yeah. I just want to know that, oh, there's something coming or this is what's up. I, hey, guys, you know, had we learned some of this when Keeper made his statement, I think it would have changed the kind of the tone. Yeah, it would have. It you know, I think it would have been a lot more settling. People been like, "Oh, okay," and would have kept grinding their, you know, <laughs> whatever their individual journey was. But and then, you know, you it take it. Cool. It was March twenty sixth. We last heard from him, so three weeks ago. And you know, if you take that post literally, we have nothing to show at this point. What that literally means, looking at this, is that there was nothing to show in relation to progress on that summer beach event. Mm. And therefore, content after that. And then if, well, you, try, then if you look at that, you got the Relic of Graphical Update and High mm -hmm. Contrast Mode. And that's it. Exactly. And that's, yeah. and that's basically, they didn't... I mean... We thought, well, maybe they're holding something back, uh, you know, and such. But obviously, they weren't. It was. I mean, the there could be, you know, bigger, and... you know, six months projects on the way forecast to release in July through September that are not there oh, of yet. Course. Like there could yeah. be those, but hmm. in in the interim, mm -mm. as we see here, so yeah, definitely a little bit concerning. And you remember back when we did those discussions, we said, well, it's either that they have nothing to share or they do have something and they're not sure if it'll pan out. And we now know that it was the former. They had nothing to share at that point, mm. literally. Which I was actually on the other side. So it's scary to think that it was actually, it was the former. Nothing interesting but, happens. Hmm. But it looks like uh, they sort of... Did I make no, it they, clear they, enough that they on. should have just said something that they were working on the summer beach <laughs> or the summer beach replacement? Yep. yep. Okay. Because yep. that would have completely 
Well, maybe not. Maybe knowing the community, maybe it would have made things worse, and maybe that's why they did it. Hmm. So I don't know if it would have made things worse. I like I said, I, I think a lot of people have things that they can that they can be working on, and for the most part, we kind of we kind of found that to be true. But if you're told after this quest you have no new content until July outside of a graphical update, hmm. For me, yeah, it wouldn't perhaps. worry me so much because I and do. And look have at how that looks. I'm after, but in yeah. the span of half a year, hmm. right? I mean, that's that's the scary great. part, and that's what people are getting upset about. Mm. Well, yeah, I mean, I guess that's fair. and a boss, a, a a boss which is sort of high mid level is going to appeal to a wide range of people but, but, I feel. but this was before rex matriarch and damn before archaeology exactly were that's what forward. i mean exactly so. that's that's exactly what i'm saying it's like you know it they they've they have corrected the course and got those out so i think they have saved themselves because if we did have nothing but that skilling event um i think there would have been a lot of drama Deserve it or not, I think there would have been a big outcry. Yeah, exactly. And it all comes back to communications and expectations, as we've been saying yep. for years. Yeah. That that and is that continually the wrong goal, that is continually right? how they keep biting themselves in the butt, isn't it, Tannis? Yep. From Menaphos <laughs> onwards, every time there's a problem, it's either communications or not enacting and not meeting player expectations every yep. time it's one of those two yep. it, it's it's like it's par for the course with this company i guess <laughs> but but then yeah they, they get that they'll have the um the ceo who the content creator who understands that and then oh okay fixes it then they sack him and put someone else in who then just turns around and does the same thing <laughs> Who are you talking about? Well, I don't think they. I think he, he left on his own accord. But uh, previous mod, uh, previous to mod keeper mod. Um, Warden. Uh, mod Warden. That's the one. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. Well, he knew comms, and that's the difference, right? Yeah. So. All right. Uh, let's uh, let's uh, move on to the other um, the other spicy bit of the week. Um, we need mod dad back. Mod Osborne? Yeah. Yeah, he was wonderful, <laughs> wasn't he? I loved Mod Osborne. <laughs> that, was, that was always my dream to go over to uh there and have a have a beer with Osborne and uh, Mod Mark. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, um for people who pre ordered the um the, the necromancy pet uh plushie, there's new plushies that can now be ordered. There is the gold trimmed rune champion, the dragon chain body cute noob and vertus uh once again through makeship if that's something that you're interested in if you had it and you got omen before um you can do that of course omen is now uh all sold out but these four here if you're interested in them definitely uh um snap them up because once they're gone uh they're gone so um and, and they look really nice. I've seen pictures in real life of uh, Omen and some of the other ones. So if you're at all a plushie collector, this is probably a good time to. I was going to uh, say they are cute, up. but I'm not really into plushies. Yeah, yeah. Um, and you know, what I was into the book, the twenty year book. book. Yes. Oh yeah, that one I've already got. Yeah. Yeah. Um, they found a, a about thirty extra copies of the deluxe edition, though. Based on the fact we're recording this at the end of the week, they're probably gone. Uh, by now, um, definitely, uh, if you can, still pick up the the plain copy of that if Deluxe is sold out. Um, but in addition to that, this week, we have new Unstable Proteins. I just want to say, no, for anyone who did order the cookbook, it has been sent out to the official cookbook, did get the yeah. pre-orders, got released. Yeah, uh, they and, were and you know, since we're on that, I'll just take a moment here and say what I was going to say about the cookbook as well. Um, I'm working with a couple of people to see if we can do something on the show here regarding the cookbook, maybe um, get some cooking video from these people, maybe, you know, talk about the recipes and how they actually uh, are and taste 
on that. They're so. actually quite interesting, some of them. Some of them They're... are fairly standard, and some of them are yeah. a couple of them are different, you know? There are, yeah, that's what I was going to say. There's a couple that are just normal, you know, normal recipes, but there are a few that are interesting that I'm going to try out, you know? It's like the stuffed snake that they've done and just how they've gotten around things like that. The, I mean, the cooked jubbly is just a, a roasted chicken, but, you know, just just different. Th- I'm just having to flick through the, the different things that they've done, and it's, you know, and it's got some of the old, you know, the old RuneScape um, icons in there for it. Um yeah, it's it's a good little book. Uh, yeah, it was only forty bucks, so Australian. So for anyone who, if you want to pick it up, um, it's a nice little addition to the uh, to the twenty year anniversary book. Yeah, right on. Unstable proteins, and not the kind of protein you get from Cook Jubbly. Um, but these came in this week. It's a new protein variety that are, as they say, overcharged and give 10% more XP than previous ones, but they're not usable from double XP and do not benefit from knowledge bombs. So they're actually weaker than normal proteins. Well, no, they're not usable during DXP, so double XP, like the double XP event, right? That's what Um, I mean, exactly. (laughs) And you can't use a knowledge bomb, but if you still have bonus XP in the skill, that will count. Mm Mm-hmm. So, essentially, it, my view on this is what number one, ten percent, not that much. No, no, not, nothing. That's what I mean. To, yeah. You know, not nothing to write home about when it comes to that. But what you, what they have done now, has created a choice. Well, not really a choice, but now you have two kinds of proteins, and you have two different kinds that you need to use at different times. So if I'm not, if it's not double XP, I'm using unstable. You know, if it is double XP, I'm using my regulars. Yeah. Um, and, and to me, that's really all it amounts to. So, um, you know, I, I think there was some of the typical, you know, too much XP discussion, but I just don't think that applies. And in fact, I think this is a sign that Every that when they bring in stuff like this, it is going to be better balanced in the future because this is this is very balanced. I'm not always a big fan of balance when it comes to my skills. I want to just uh, give me the you know give me the numbers, but <laughs> um, <laughs> but it's cool, right? Like I mean, I, I see what they're doing and it makes sense, but it's just really, uh, I, I just see it as a, as a choice between well, you know, like which protein are you using at which time. You know, I see the yep. original the original problem as being um, that proteins were really, you know, being hoarded to the point they were only used on double XP because they oh, specifically course. mentioned yeah. you can you can mm-hmm. use them on double XP, and I think this points to a bigger problem in the game where people are really only skilling and even and mainly the viable skills, but skills in general, if you know how to PVM. It almost makes no point to skill um, outside of a double XP event. Well, and because you can just these... spend the rest of the time, the rest of the time, um, making money for that double XP and just capitalizing in on that forty-eight hour period. I mean, look, you can't you can't fault somebody for trying to maximize you know their efficiency right like no one would question no one would ever question that on a on a on the pvm side but what the question that does bring up like that you say you know it's bigger is here's the dirty secret about proteins it's not it's not just the xp in fact i would say the xp is a smaller part of this it's the convenience of training it's the it's it's the AFK ness. Yeah, the, exactly. Yeah. And which goes to a bigger thing of there's a demand for that in every skill. Right? Like that's what people are really doing the proteins for. I mean, if I'm doing protein I, it it's cause I have them and I'm I wanna be kinda, you know, AFK or, you know, working on portables or something like that. Um it it just makes it just makes more sense um 
especially with the protein prolongers too, 120 yeah, at a exactly. time. It's fantastic. Yeah. Load yeah. it up. I can go do a load of washing, unload the dishwasher, put it all away, come back, and, yeah, I've still got three to go. I'll sit here, click, and then go off and do something else again. It also <laughs> explains why they've been trying to draw proteins out of the out of the economy too with them. Um, mm. At the last two big events they did, you know, being able to donate however many thousands of proteins mm-hmm. to get your Vorkath shard or what have you. You know, mm-hmm. it makes sense now. Those were the kind of attempts to see, okay, can we kind of limit the amount that's in the economy and then see if people, you know, either get rid of all of them and then start using them or if they're just kind of still just sitting there, right? Yeah. And I would yeah. expect mm-hmm. over time, I would expect regular proteins to be phased out for these mm. unstable well, ones. Yeah, I would say the unstable are going to become a lot more popular on, or a lot more um, common than the other ones. I would, and I know we don't like the MTX, but I would say they'll probably start saving regular proteins just for those MTX things where you just get packs of them to get people buying keys, uh, you know, sort of a week or two before the XPs. There is a... Here's a little secret, y'all. Don't, don't, I mean, that's... Don't... As, as, as... Sorry, yeah, you go. I was going to say, don't don't tell everybody you heard it here, but um, if that does happen, Shane, if that does come to fruition, go to the Mimic. Why? They might, they might, not, they might not think to change Take it. Take them off her? <laughs> yeah, there's a oh, sh- right, because the Mimic is it. the treasure hunter boss. Yeah, yeah, that's right. It drops drops proteins a lot. Yeah, yeah that's a lot but again, of proteins. That's it. But I mean, that's that's the the thing. I mean, you know, it's as as a business manager myself. I, well, how can I increase profit? Well, that's one way I'd look at it. Phase them out. Bring in these unstable ones that can't be used on DXP. Save the uh, other ones as that sort of. Let's sell them, sell them for DXP type uh, situations and get and get money coming in. Uh, you know, it's it's ugly, but you know, companies, as we said before, they're not charities. They've got uh, wages to pay. But, everything. I mean, the biggest you know. thing that I'm concerned about, and Tannis, you can go after me on this. My biggest thing is that this foretells a bigger problem with XP in the game. Oh yeah, <laughs> because if people like. If people are doing this with proteins and they're not training, what are they doing with everything else that's buyable? Why a lot of stuff's going down. Right. Like, that's what I said. Oh. I just, I, I really don't think if you have a good, a... consistent money-making method and you have something you can do to pass the time in game, I really don't think you're sinking money into skills outside of double XP anymore. Yes. Well, I've I, I've had a whole bunch no. of wines of Zamorak that I got from uh, um, uh, one of the bosses at uh, Dungeon Wars Two, uh, God Wars Two, I should say. Um, yeah, they're down. They're like six hundred GP now. I mean, I go back to last time I was buying and selling them. They were you know five and six k. Yeah, now there's 672 GP. It's like, what happened? Uh, you know, and I mean, even a compare, lot of the mushrooms. It's just right. like, and I think yeah. this this points to again a fundamental issue with the skilling economy in general, with everything you know going down. Is that I feel like we're starting to feel that push where um, the the bulk of what we are seeing in game and you know in terms of the high end skilling items is that there's just no demand for them outside of double xp i think that's why the prices are going down that's right and and, and again because there's so many pro- I mean, i've got enough proteins to get me to 200 mil on on a couple of my skills right. for this week and and i was talking to sirion about this um it's why i don't train my skill peer outside of double xp mm. why sink time into it well, I think it's just a it's a matter of if if you're playing, if you're not. Yeah. I mean, it's some and some people are not. PBM some people are people not efficiency minded. Just, no. And some people are gonna be like, I mean, you know, I, I really think you you've still got a a pretty good percentage of people that are gonna pl- 
play AFK. Um, rather, they're watching movies or playing. Yeah, and I mean, I mean, the amount of proteins to bring it back to that that we're talking about to get something to two hundred mil or one twenty is astounding. So it's not as though people are hitting pause for you know the protein reason. I realize this discussion is kind of moved on from the proteins to more of a general skilling economy kind of thing, but nobody is sitting. I, well, I shouldn't say nobody. A small amount of people, aside, like you, Parnassius, are sitting on the proteins needed to get you to 120 or 200 in a skill. A small amount of hmm. people are doing that. But I think just in general, a lot waiting for there's just a lot too. of people who are like, yeah, I'll just wait till double XP. I know it comes every three months. Hmm. Uh, oh, I'll, I'll train my I levels still... up to do all the quests I need to do, and I'm good otherwise. Yeah. I mean, now, you gotta, let's be fair, because I really think it's the, it's the ease, uh, ease of access with proteins. They are not the best XP per hour on no. double XP. It's not the best use no. of your time, and it's definitely not the most efficient way to play. But it's the easiest. Like, there has to be something to be said for that. Well, that's right. And as I said, I mean, I do, I'll sit down, okay, I've got the housework to do. I load up all my proteins, put those on, come back every sort of eight or nine minutes, click on the screen, uh, do that. Then when I'm actually sitting down in front of the computer, I'll go and do those sort of more lean forward, faster XP ones. But it gives me that, you know, it, it, it increases my playtime, you know, for an extra four or five hours a day where I'm doing stuff around the house and, that I'm still earning decent right. XP. Well, here, here's... Here's my controversial statement for the night. Um, I should be able to pay for that and have it. I'm I'm forty something year old dude. Come on, man. What do you want to pay for? I don't. I don't. I don't. I, I, I'll keep. Let me. Let me buy my proteins like that. Like oh, I. Oh yeah, I, that's I, what's that. You want to buy unstable like, ones? Whatever. Let me buy them all. I'll take them all. Because. I'm not like I don't have 12 hours anymore, right? Like, hmm. but I could do that. I could do that on a second screen if I'm doing some paperwork or something, <laughs> or this or that. And I should be able to do that. And I don't, I don't see anything wrong. Yeah, with and it. that's the fundamental difference between RS3 and old school. Is it's a difference in strategy, whereas that's okay over here. Mm. Yeah. Well, I mean, I don't think everyone thinks it's okay, but I think it's okay just because. Well, the funny thing is, everyone mm. makes a noise, but everyone still does it, don't they? I mean, I see, <laughs> I hear all these YouTubers screaming, "Oh, it can't be on what they're doing!" What they're... And then you click on, and they're sitting there, you know, on World eighty four, right beside you, pumping yeah. away with all that stuff that they're complaining about. <laughs> Hell yeah! At least I'm honest, right? <laughs> I don't think it make, it's, it's going to make a big difference in the grand scheme of things, skilling economy-wise. I do think it will make a difference in terms of when proteins are used. And I feel like that's, yes. the, that's the big yep. through line of yep. this. And they're just giving them that 10% buff to kind of um, lessen the blow of the other ones going away, I'd say. And don't expect it to happen overnight. I think, you know, just expect it to happen over phased. time. Yeah. So... Which and which I have no real issue with, but yeah. But as I said, they won't disappear completely. They'll they'll be there for special, you know, special treasure hunter um, events, the weeks well, before it could each be, DXP I mean, and things, you know. Yeah, which I is mean, fine. Add them to the well, time to skill promos, right? Mm, that come before the double XP. Exactly. I'm cool with yep. that. Bring it. Yeah. It'll save a lot of hoarding that, that way too. Mm -hmm. All right. I had an idea this week as I was preparing the show, and this is also ties in with the merch update in the cookbook. Um, I already mentioned what we're going to do with the cookbook, but another uh, piece of merch that's on the way is the um, hardback journal, a uh, journal with the RuneScape map on the front of it that has 192 pages um, to you know write your journaling in. And I was actually thinking of picking one of these up. And it moving good. Yeah. And, and moving the edit notes to this, 
because you 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 look at the RS3 show, the old school show at monthly bits. With that, you're you know you're looking at you know nine shows a month, and you know if each one has a has a portion of a page associated with that, and you have 192 uh, pages in there, you you look at this thing. And, you know, in, in under two years, you have this book filled up. And then I was thinking, well, you know, we start using this book for the edit notes. And then after that, we raffle it off to one of the Patreon supporters. Because I, 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 I bet people would like seeing our edit notes like that, even though they're handwritten. Yeah, that'd be cool. That would be cool. <laughs> so I'm, I'm, I'm seriously contemplating picking one of those up and, and going, going through that. So let us know uh, if, if that's something... Uh, that you think would be fun for us to do, and we could provide regular updates on that too. Because right now, I just, I just take the edit notes on my page a day calendar pages from the past few days, and then after the show is out and done, and they just go in the garbage. So, I think it would be fun to, um, like, if you were starting a new character, right? That's another of, good use case for it know. too. I think. Oh yeah, right. But right. at the same time, yeah, yeah, but at the same time for that. When it comes to, you know, RuneScape goals and keeping track of where you're at, let's be real that something like Apple Notes or even Notion is going to be a better thing for that because you can include screenshots, links to the wiki, links to your conversations with ChatGPT about, about RuneScape stuff, which, by the way, you can do, believe it or not. Um, uh, you we might do that as do a second. That? I tell you what, if you do yeah. that... I mean, yeah... If you if you if you're willing to sit there and write them all out, my edit notes. I will your your edit notes. I will donate the journal to the show. Oh, you don't need to do that to get that done. You no, don't no, need to, no, 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 no. You don't need to do that. I was going to do this before, and <laughs> no, no, you're not doing that. Donate another oh. bond next time we uh, okay. we have a giveaway okay, instead. I'll... Okay, I'll do that. <laughs> But, I reckon that's write, a brilliant idea. Yeah, you could write fan fiction in it, right? Like, it be your, your RuneScape fan fiction collection, right? Or Oh, my God. <laughs> yeah, the possibilities are endless. Maybe I do, because I am having so much t trouble doing digital. I'm, 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 a, I'm, a, I'm an artist with normal pencils and things. I'm trying to learn digital art, but I just struggle so much with it. Maybe I do that and do my uh, little iPad, story right? that way. Yeah. Um, and I've got all the different things. Two apps you need pen. to get: uh, Procreate and Pixelmator. Got it. Oh, which one? Pixelmator. Pixelmator. It's basically yeah. an it's a Mac OS, iOS uh, native version of Photoshop with Apple design guidelines through it, so it's easy to get into. You can open all okay. the Photoshop files. Yeah. And no, I got, I got Procreate uh, Pro Edition, but yeah, I just I don't know. I just I like my pencil doing it and then doing the colors and all that but yes all right um also this anyway. week uh, just to, <laughs> yeah that's it's fine just a few patch notes um engine fixes they fixed uh, a vfx issue with the fire in zuck's uh, igneous rain phase otherwise known as the pizza phase which i know a Yay! lot of people have been uh having issues with so that's there the gate of the Catherby B farm has been fixed, and the gate is situated west of the Catherby Lodestone, but on the east side of the farm. So let's just say weast and call it a day. And uh, there were some rather interesting pictures of how the gate was before, so I thought I'd mention that. And finally, uh, an odd one to end, end out patch notes, the Falador party room's balloon bonanza will no longer be blocked by planting mithril seeds in the party room. Taking us oh, way yeah. back. Way, yeah, back. way back. So, but. alrighty, folks. Let's um, let's go through some of our achievements this week. We don't have too many of them, uh, again, and that's that's a okay. So, starting off here this week, we have Godin with one twenty Slayer on April thirteenth. Yahoo with one twenty Herblor on the thirteenth. Um, Atreus with ninety nine. Summoning and 99 Hunter on the 12th of April, and DJ Moore, that's Bears, with 200 million strength XP on the 11th. Well done, everyone. Nicely nice. done. And it's Yahoo! Yeah, it I right. remember that from back in the day. <laughs> yeah. I remember that. You're old enough for that one? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so pick of the week. 
Were any of you guys um, big fans of, say, the NES, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy Damn, Color, yeah. Game Boy Advance, and DS? Dude, that's my I childhood. My yeah, I had my DS. The only one missing is Atari. I've had every one of those systems you named off. So, oh, Nintendo 64? Yep. yep. Well, I mean, I never played it much, but we had one in the house. Oh, my brother, no, my brother I... was all about the 64. Yeah, I grew up on that. There was a recent rule change on iOS, and game emulators for retro games are now legal on iOS. They were not in the past. Nice. So the pick of the week this week is the Delta Game Emulator, a free app on iOS, presently rated number one in the entertainment category, emulates all the systems that I highlighted from NES, Super Nintendo, N64, Game Boy, Game Boy Color, Game Boy Advance, the DS, um, with more to come in the future. Supports controllers, including Switch controllers, Switch Pro controllers, PS4, PS5, Xbox controllers, MFI game controllers, as well as Bluetooth and wired keyboards. And the idea behind this is that you load up um, your favorite game ROMs, wherever you get them, either through, of course, making your own game ROM through any of the pieces of hardware that are available or finding them on the internet, as people do. And you load it up into the files section on your phone or through iCloud. And next thing you know, you're playing an old game to the point where I might have spent about 90 minutes last night playing Pokemon Yellow on this. You mean I can get Donkey Kong back? Yeah, any, any game on there. Any <laughs> game on there that worked on any of those uh, systems, you'll be able to run. So if you want to go back just... to the first N64 Smash, you can do that and <laughs> throw up a controller, too, with that. And you know what the best part about this is? Is that you think of it as a handheld, right? Mm -hmm. Using it as just, just handheld with your phone. But what you can also do if you're playing like an N64 game on here, airplay it to your Apple TV or compatible TV. Mm. And then you have the exact same sort of thing you always used to have, except rather running it off your console. It's running off your your phone or your iPad. That's what this is capable of with this. That's pretty cool. Mm. Oh yeah, that is pretty cool. <laughs> that is. <laughs> I'm, I'm looking at this one. Now, do you get any, if I get a link off you, do I get any, do you get anything this time? No, not Unlike this the last time. one I did? <laughs> not this okay. time. Okay, I'll, I'll just download it then without waiting for your link. <laughs> it also supports uh, the cheat codes oh. uh, that people used on those platforms. So Game Genie, uh, Pro Action Replay, Game Shark, um, Action Replay, and Code Breaker um, for any of the platforms that were out there. And as you would expect as well, it's all modern saving. You can save the exact state that you're in in the game by just closing the app. You can save um, states to files and export them to so wow. you can restore them. Supports as well in addition to uh, the iOS file system and iCloud, Google Drive, and Dropbox as well. And one of the things I have, haven't actually looked into is that it's got custom skins uh, for all systems. So if you're playing a handheld and you don't like the way the one looks that it gives you, uh, you can completely skin that to look like what your old one used to be. So if you had, used to have one of the lime green uh, Game Boy Colors, you can do that and, and have that for this too. So mm. it's got the kitchen sink on this, and this is, you know, this is the iOS uh, Nintendo-based game emulator that you want to be using. It's by far the most stable one. It's by far the one that isn't doing anything uh, shady or violating any uh, rules because there were some previous ones that came out earlier in the week, but they were taken down because they um, violated copyright. But this is definitely the one uh, you probably want to go for. And that's why I brought this out as pick of the week because I, I feel like, you know, this is this is this is old hat for people on on Android, right? You could do this from day one on Android, whereas it was always a big no no on iOS. Whereas here now, it's actually out in the open and it's uh, encouraged for retro retro games only, of course, because Apple doesn't want you competing with their um, with their with with their regular games that are out there. But and a four point uh, nine out of five rating too. That's probably one of the highest I've seen. Yeah, exactly. Um, you know, when when you look at these sorts of apps, it's 
it's something that you know you you, you want to have done right so that's why that's why it's this one uh link can be found in the show notes over at update.show what games if you were going back to any of those systems what's the first games you you would you would go for Castlevania. okay Castlevania carried out yeah, I I loved uh, Donkey Kong and I loved um, yeah, that's stupid, but Tetris. <laughs> that that would be NES then, right? For Tetris. Any, yeah. Okay. Okay. I I have half a mind to go and see if we can find a Smash ROM for the original N sixty four one. That would be quite fun. So. Nice. I'll give you. I'll give you a list, and you can find them for me. Oh soon, no, I'm not doing that. I'm not doing that. No, I did what I did. I'm, 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 I'm the one who will sit there, and I'll, I'll find the wrong link, and uh, end up, you know, getting hacked and losing everything again. <laughs> yeah. I'll get my kids well, on we'll see. We'll my see. Son's the... into all this stuff, so I'll yeah, get him maybe, to do it. <laughs> yeah, maybe he can help you on that then. Um, because I know, I know on, on, on my side, this was just a flat file that I downloaded and I didn't even need to execute anything on the computer for it. I just copied it to iCloud and that was that. So that's cool. Yeah. But, alrighty. Really cool. Uh, what have we been up to in RS Tannis since it's been three weeks? Go for it. <laughs> um, yeah, doing, doing some low impact things, um, wood cutting, a little bit of farming, um, and what was the other thing I've been doing? A little bit of fletching, but mostly just wood cutting. Okay, fair enough. Yeah. Still on that track for DXP? Yep. Nice. Uh Pern, uh how has how has Zach been going? <laughs> okay. Um Zach hasn't been great. I have died seven times uh, the last two days. Um, first time I've been back for a little while. Back still playing up a little bit, so I haven't really been in that sort of heavier PVM mode. I did complete the Vindicta drop log. Ooh! So finished that. Uh, finished Hellware. Now on to the Twins. Um... I don't just like got the Twins. one pet to go on the Twins. No, not a big fan because I can't really AFK. Uh, but still, I mean, they're easy enough when you're sort of watching. So an hour a day there. Uh, just got one pet to go there. I am at uh, just uh, just hit the 700 kill mark there. Uh, took me, I think it was 1,400 odd kills to complete the other drop log. Um, and yeah, uh, also, 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 finally got my master quest cape back. Ooh, what was missing? Oh, uh, just the the Thelmon. That's why I said it was yes, ah. very exciting. Because he's only there. What he's only there Wednesdays. I just yes three. I think three weeks. I missed getting it, so I actually ended up setting an alarm on my uh, phone every Wednesday to do Thelmond. <laughs> so got that. So got my uh, got my Master Quest cape back, which is good. Very nice. So what's the plan for Zach? Because I know you know a month and a bit ago we had yep. you for the. Uh, PVM teaching monthly bit. Where yeah, I've, is there anything on there question wise? Things that need further explanation. Everything, everything you told me is working perfectly. It's my execution. I am useless at pref, uh, switching. <laughs> so I've got them keybound, but yeah, just I keep. It's just uh, when I get the triple jads because jad appears sort of two or three seconds after everyone else on the wave. I've got to watch what wave I'm on. I know that he's coming up, but sort of the other things start hitting you. So you're sort of looking at them. Then all of a sudden he spawns. You've got you get dragged out from the safe spot by one of them, and then I get hit by two jads sometimes or the prayer flicking. I've just got to remember when he goes fully up. I just for some reason, my brain, I know it's not, but my brain tells me when he goes fully up, he's hitting the roof and the rock, rope drop, uh, the rock drops, but that's the one where he's shooting the fire out of the magic out of his belly. So I've just got to, just got to get myself used to that. And, yeah. Um, the, the thing that I we'll always use to differentiate with that, and I haven't had any problems since, is just watch for the feet and the shock waves because that's, that's the ranged one. That's, that's, yeah. that's my differentiation on that. And since then, it's been yeah. no problem. Um, <laughs> Though, you know, keybinds, mouse, that might have something uh to do with it too. So Yeah. But uh, no, it's it's been it's been fun and you know, as I said, you know, I did uh I did four four attempts one day, three attempts yesterday and uh 
no visitors this weekend, so kids are away. So I'll be uh, basically just at the there for this weekend. So I will have that cape. I am determined not to give up until I get the cape this weekend. Nice. As for me, uh, the the push at the Raziel uh, continues for the lantern, the last item in the drop log. Though in chatting with people, it could be uh, quite some time still. So um, I've I've uh, I've looked to uh, diversifying the RuneScape uh, three experience time um, with with kind of the same thing that you've been doing, Tannis. Um, I've, I've been preparing for double XP. It did some. I uh, got some of the fletching um, stuff because uh, last time I did, I got a bunch of the, the zygomite hair. So then this time it comes into um, getting the rest of the arrows and, you know, hopefully just get a huge, huge gob of fletching XP when double XP comes around. Because I, I, I think I've decided at this point, and the only thing really keeping me from leaning into this fully is the fact I can't be on RS3 and old school at the same time, is that I would yeah. like... I would like to get probably 120 all in the same way that I got 99s in that same order. Well, do you remember that order? Uh, I have it. I have it logged because uh, oh. the RSBNB <laughs> website did that. Yes. Yeah, I don't know if I would remember mine. Yeah, hmm. yeah, we probably have a bunch of your orders in there from when you were being tracked on there. I really just remember my first cape, which is my quest cape. Yeah, same. And then I think it was same. Fishing, same. Af- fishing after that one. <laughs> yeah, farming before the presets, but unfortunately, that won't be that won't be possible uh, going forward. But uh, usual weekly plug: old school RuneScape update comes out every Sunday. Uh, we're going to have another pop and show this week, talking about old school's foray into rebalancing combat without without going the way RS3 did and how that is going for them. Um, definitely some interesting stuff happening there with min hit, max hit, and magic balancing in particular. We talked about magic uh, last week on the show, so go back, listen to that if you uh, are interested in old school and figure out and want to see a way that, you know, Jagex could have done it without ES- EOC. It's actually quite interesting. YouTube.com slash at OSRS update but more on the uh, the combat rebalance stuff this week on the podcast and our usual uh, adventures over there. My big highlight for the week, 60 Mining, Mining Guild. That's big. Hey, very nice. Yeah. And we actually have a new mining training method that is uh, relatively AFK uh, that came out with uh, Varlamore. So oh. I'm, I realize I'm going to maybe give the both of you guys a conniption here. But I don't actually think old school needs the mining and smithing rework. Yes. <laughs> no. <laughs> hey, smithing, I agree. Mining, no way. We, they need they need at least something to to store more ore in, like the ore box. <laughs> True. <laughs> because I I I logged on to um my uh, INRS account, which is sort of the one I use for old school over there, and. Just trying to get my mining up, uh, you know, loading 28 iron ore and then running and banking it and then running back down. It's just like, oh, God, I remember why I hated this skill earlier. <laughs> yeah. Mother load mine. Yeah, but I, I'm only free to play at the moment. So. Oh, okay, fair. fair. Is fair. that mother load mine over on the other other no, island? No, mother load mine is, um, is, is part of the Dwarven Mountain and the idea behind that one is that you mine something called pay dirt and then you run it through a sifting mechanic. Then you get ore that's relevant to your level and there's a banking chest right there. It's slower oh. XP, but that's a way of getting ore. Um, and if you want ores and bars in a way of getting that without needing mining, um, there's uh, Zolcano, of course, that comes after Song of the Elves and Prif, but it's a skilling boss. So. Okay, cool. Um, that's that's what that's, I miss that's over here. Kind of why, that's kind of why I say <laughs> I'm getting to the point where I don't think old school needs the mining and smithing room work. Yeah, yeah. I mean, if you had things like mining bosses and that type of stuff, um, Zolkin is so I mean, much fun. It's it's funner than Croesus, dare I say. No, but I still haven't done Croesus yet. Right. I didn't find Croesus all that fun. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but. 
Uh, interesting times ahead, uh, nonetheless. But uh, we'll be back next week for Quest Week, of course, here on the podcast. Uh, thanks uh, to the both of you for being here. Tannis, good to have you back. Thank you, Shane. Good to be back. Um, if you want the podcast delivered automatically to you, the best way to do that is to subscribe. Head on over to update.show slash subscribe. We're on all the major podcast listeners out there. Apple, Pocket Cast, Spotify, and more. Also YouTube as well, youtube.com slash RSBNB. Do give the channel a like and subscribe. Greatly helps us out. And, I mean, why not if you like the show? So with that being said, we'll see you guys next week for another episode of RSBNB Update. See you then, everyone. Take care. See ya. Happy skyping. Happy skyping.